folks, the Infrared Mortgage Update. Today is May 15th, 2020. So I brought my team in today because what we want to discuss with you guys is uh, forbearance. Uh, but the main thing is with the COVID you know, pandemic going on, we want to educate people on what they should and should not do when it comes to your mortgage. It's the biggest debt you have. And I'm not trying to make light of the situation. Uh, there's a lot of people out there struggling right now that don't have the income coming in or having a tough time putting food on the table. But what we wanted to do is get the information out that the true facts behind forbearance, what it really truly is and means and does for you and what it hinders you from doing um, down the road. So um, thanks for coming, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good to see you, sir. So, Great. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome to see it's me. Friday, man. <laughs> TGIF. Yeah. So... You guys, the, some, some stories that you guys have on forbearance and things. What, what is the take, what is the lender take of things when it comes to forbearance? Well, I think everybody's hurting right now. And obviously, you know, we as lenders want to give them the different options that are available. You know, and obviously in, 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 in that, we want to make sure that we, you know, not coach them, but we want to make sure that we educate them on what forbearance actually is. Right. And so... Um, I try to tell all of my clients, I've given them both options, and obviously, let's be real, I want to try to swim in a refinance route versus, you know, going into forbearance because obviously there's some significant changes and things that they probably not, might not see or know. So, right. yeah. So what's what's the definition or what is the truth behind, what does forbearance really mean? Well, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about what a forbearance is, and I think people's lenders aren't really giving them exactly what that means so typically what's going to happen is they're going to have three payments that they're going to skip right and a lot of clients think it's going to just get added to the back end of the mortgage and they're not going to have to make it up but the, the truth of the matter is most lenders are calling all of those three missed payments due at the end of the three month forbearance right so at the end of three months now you're stuck making up the three payments that you missed plus your current one and if you can't do it, then what they're doing is splitting it up over the next 12 months. So your payment's going to skyrocket yeah. just to get caught back up again. If you can't make one payment, how are you going to make four? Right. right. And I, what I don't think, I, I think a lot of people don't even know, truly, even lenders don't know what they're going to do. Because I call my lender just as a, I just wanted to educate people. And I did the video about 30 days ago, and I called my lender. And they're like, we don't know. Yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. The, here's the bad thing is, and I'll say this, and it kind of made the hair on the back of my neck stand up, is they said, well, we can't really help you now. Even if we did have a forbearance plan uh, set up, we can't help you because you're current. So if you don't pay this month and you go delinquent, then we could see where we can help you. Who wants to do that? Well, you guys have been doing this long enough. That's pretty scary. That's, that's yeah. not only scary, that's ignorant. But 2008, is it deja vu when yeah. all this stuff comes? So they, yes. So they would they would have you, they would just say the same thing, mm -hmm. and then what happened? We also had. <laughs> yeah, you'd end up skipping a home mortgage payment or three, and then not getting a modification, and next thing you know, you're in foreclosure. Closure, closure, the market yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that's why the bubble burst. And that's why I said to them, I said, so you can't even tell me what your protocol is until I go delinquent, and then you go delinquent, and now I'm stuck. Yeah. I can't refinance. Yeah. I, I could sell my house, I guess, but you can't refinance because no. you have a 30-day late, yeah. so you can't re uh, do anything with a 30-day late and pass. So take a perfectly good borrower who could possibly have gone that route, who yeah. didn't decide to call and talk to someone like us, right. and now they're screwed for months, years down yeah. the line. Absolutely. Because they wanted to skip two payments. So that was, so that, I, I called them, that, that's specifically yeah. what I, why I called them, like, well, um, what are you guys doing? And they're, that, that's exactly what they told me, and I'm like, uh, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there and I lived it. Exactly. How many people did you guys work with that had it at the point where, oh, you know, I, I haven't made a payment in a year, and they're all giddy, and the next thing you find out is, they lost their home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All and it happened to millions of people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the forbearance thing is still getting worked on, um, but the lenders don't be at the, I always tell my clients, don't be at the, the, the mercy of the lender. 
because they're probably not going to give you terms that are best for you. you. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, even in the time of the modifications, mm -hmm. how many times did you see where they threw it on the back end and then yeah. they increased the person's rate, yeah. mm -hmm. increased the term, so they would go to a four from a four percent rate to a six yeah. over forty years. Over forty, 40 years. years, and then they'd have the deficiency balance yeah. still yeah. left over. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are you doing? What do you know what that is? What is so? It? <laughs> okay, so that's the forbearance piece of things is what we're trying to advise everybody is it, it, the forbearance. The, the basically the term is it, it's not a forgiveness of debt; it's a postponement of debt. Uh, so basically, they're just kicking the can down the road for three or four months, and then all of a sudden, they're going to give you one balloon payment that you need to make. So that is the definition or basically the fundamentals behind forbearance. So now we have an alternative, and I think it's a fantastic alternative, and their phones are ringing off the hook because the people that are watching our channel and checking out the podcast and my radio shows are seeing, wow, I can actually you know get a lower rate, skip payments, and do all this. Um and, and you know, basically do the exact same thing to a point that the forbearance is doing for me, but putting me in a long-term better position. So, like, if somebody has an FHA loan, mm -hmm. what would what would you do with that client? I would. Uh, there's two options. I mean, one option would be an FHA streamline. And borrowers that I would put through that, obviously, you know, we can save them money with this. Give a payment. So define streamline. What's okay. all needed? Basically, a streamline is a. a Next to no document loan, <laughs> um, the only things needed are a mortgage note and homeowner's insurance info, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we can refinance you, lower your interest rate, lower your payment. You'll still keep the MI, however, you, you see all those benefits. And obviously, you know, if it's there, obviously we can, uh, we can provide that for you. The other option would be taking an FHA borrower to a conventional borrower. There are a couple of things that you have to take in consideration there. Um, your loan to value, as well as your credit score. Um, and so if we're going that route, then we'll see what makes sense with taking it from FHA to conventional, removing mortgage insurance, skipping mortgage payments. I mean, there's tons of benefits. I mean, I could pitch a loan right now, but you want to find a benefit and which option works best for that FHA borrower if they're currently an FHA client. So, yeah. A VA. What would you do with a VA client? Something very similar. It's yeah. actually, I think, one of the best loans out there. Uh, it is. Called a VA Earl Interest Rate Reduction Loan. Um, no appraisal. No income, really no documentation. Just redoing the loan at today's lower rates and you skip two payments, just like you were saying. No appraisal. It's very simple. Probably as close to a no-brainer as possible. So here, here's what people say, though. When you, when some of the people will be watching the video, they say, there you guys go again. You bankers, you're doing these stupid loans. <laughs> you're coming back. On, and I want to perfectly, what I want to focus on is the FHA streamline and the and the Earl, mm -hmm. what's your comeback on that? Well, on that, it's a no brainer and it's adding no more risk. So it's it's not a stupid it's risk. risk. It, it's not the same thing as you know back in the early two thousands when you're doing no documentation loans. These we the mortgage is already there. You're already making the mortgage payment. You're already current on your mortgage payment. All it's doing is putting you in a better position to be able to make. A lower payment so if anything it just reduces the risk that's already there exactly you're not increasing the loan term or right. the um the balance of the mortgage right. at all um i think 30 days worth of interest but your balance doesn't go up at all you're just paying less interest and a lower payment yeah. so let me walk you guys through uh how these work so an fha if you currently have an fha loan what we do is we take that current balance we add 30 days of interest to it and that's your new loan Okay, so but to qualify, there's there's some criteria. You have to have a 640 credit score during this pandemic. Normally, it's 580. But you need a 640 credit score. You can't have any late payments in the last 12 months. So that's where it comes into play. It does make sense. And you're, here's the biggest thing. Your rate has to reduce by at least a half a percent. So let's say today's world, I just got a, a quote right here. And the person's at 4.875. Well, if my rates today were at six or seven, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't recommend you do that. But our rates today is 2.75. The APR is 3.3. So for in that person's uh, situation, they have a 660 credit score. Um, they have an FHA, never missed a payment in a year. And we're driving down their, their uh, payment by $387 a month. 
That's a perfect example of the FHA uh, streamline. The VA, what they call the EARL, it's a VA streamline, is basically the same thing. So we have to reduce your rate by a half a percent. And your credit score has to be 640 and above and no late payments in the past year. That's the whole qualifications for those two programs. So if you do have a, a VA or, or an FHA rate or loan, if your rate is three and a half or more, call us because we should be able to refinance that. Again, your rate has to be your end result that we get you. The rate has to be lower than a half a percent. So if you're at three and a half, we get you three, you have a 640 credit score and no late pays, you qualify. Slam dunk. That's basically it. You can also do this if that house, if you originally bought the home as a conventional or, a, or as your primary home, and now it is a rental property. So even though you bought it eight years ago and you converted it from a primary to an investment property and it's FHA, you can still do that as an FHA streamline. Very easy qualifications. So now what we were saying before is if they wanted to refinance from an FHA to a conventional, what, what's the person out there listening? What is their scenario? What, what person would you move from an FHA to a conventional loan? Their debt improved, meaning they have less debt. Their credit score might have improved when they took out the first loan. Yeah. I mean, there's a few different scenarios, but those are two of the main things that I'll take a look at and structure accordingly. But well, the good thing or, or more equity. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's typically an yeah. FHA, they put three and a half percent down. With conventional, you only need 5% equity in the property. And the mortgage insurance on a conventional loan, even at 95% loan of value, is still going to be significantly less than FHA. Elaborate, what is mortgage insurance? Mortgage insurance is basically the insurance that you're going to pay to the lender to borrow less than uh, or more than 80% uh, of the value of the property. So anytime you're above 80% of the value, you're going to be paying an insurance premium. Um, FHA, it's much higher and it's on there for the life of the loan. With a conventional loan, it's much lower. And once you hit 80% of the value of the property, then that mortgage insurance will automatically come off. Yeah. So Plus, someone that has an FHA loan for two years, they might have 20% equity, mm -hmm. which will just eliminate the yeah. amount of Especially in areas such as California, Florida, <clears throat> yeah. Texas, yeah. some of those high appreciating areas, like the client that, mm -hmm. that I had another client this morning, he, he bought the house, and we don't see this much in Illinois. He bought the house. Uh, Are you the dog in our state? Yeah. <laughs> he bought the house it six years ago. <laughs> six years ago. And it's doubled. Wow. Awesome. Straight. Um, so in that case, he sends in, it was, he was looking for a streamline. And I went through and I'm like, dude, you don't want to do a streamline. Yeah. Here's why. Here's you would you would fit into a conventional loan. Here's the reason I've behind had it. that conversation quite a bit lately. They want the streamline or yeah. they want the FHA deal because they see rate, rate, rate. Let right. me touch on that too okay. because people see 2875% and they, they want to argue me on the fact that they should stay FHA. I go, John, Tom, Mike, Mary, no. <laughs> but have, why? Why would you, that's what I'm why saying. Would you, you have the equity to go conventional? I see that you are you're, you're paying attention to this interest rate and that my rate on this conventional is higher. But let me show you why and how you're actually saving more by going this route versus staying in an FHA loan. So how how would remove the mortgage insurance? The rate goes up slightly. The mortgage insurance uh, or rate goes up slightly. Their equity position improves. The mortgage insurance is gone. Got it. So, so when you get an FHA loan, it doesn't matter if you put fifty percent down when you're buying the house or you have a fifty percent equity position. Let, let me explain what that is. Is when we talk loan to value. Basically, what we're saying is the loan divided by the value of your home. So if you your house is 100000 in value and you owe 100000 100 divided by 100 is 100%. If you owe 50000 and your value is 100, 50 divided by 100 is 50%. So when we speak about loan to value, that's what we're talking about. So if we could take you from a, an FHA loan that you have mortgage insurance, and that mortgage insurance could be 150, 200 bucks a month, and take you to a conventional loan, um, you, you don't have that mortgage insurance. Thus, your payment, let's say the rate, let's say if the rates are the same, your payment automatically is gonna be $150 less on a conventional loan 
because you don't have that PMI. Normally though, a conventional loan is a little bit higher. So let's say it's a little bit higher that your payment goes up 50 bucks, but you're eliminating the $150 in PMI. Bucks it's a hundred bucks a month you're saving. So, and again, as, as they were saying, is PMI on an FHA loan in most cases is there for the whole duration of the loan, no matter if you've paid on it for six years or 20 years, it's still on there. So the only way to get rid of it is by refinancing. So um, let, let's go over rates. Here's, here's another thing that people, people get inundated with mortgage rates. And they, they focus, focus, focus on that all the time. So what is, I always say, I always request the clients send me their loan estimate. So when somebody's evaluating their, uh, their loan proposal, what are you looking at when somebody says, well, I'm getting two and a half percent over here, you're at three. What's your first thought? Yeah, my first initial thought is going to be, well, what are you paying to get to that rate? What's it actually going to cost you? And it's it's not your loan estimate. It What's a loan estimate? I'm sorry. It's a, a breakdown of the you know total fees needed to get that loan. Uh, it breaks down your escrow, the origination, uh, title cost, all that is wrapped into an estimate, they call it a loan estimate. So a lot of times if the rate seems much lower than what I can offer, nine times out of 10, probably even 10 times out of 10, yeah. they're charging you. They're, you're paying for it. A somewhere. lot. Yeah. I had a borrower today, she was getting 3.75 and they were charging her a point and a half. What's a point and a half? So a point and a half would be, if your loan amount is 100,000, one and a half percent of that, so 1,500. And again, the loans, average, average loans probably close to three hundred thousand. Yeah, so that's five grand to get that rate there. And that costs top, nothing. And that's on top of the regular closing costs, yes. which yes. are yes. insane. Or so normally fifteen hundred bucks. Right. Yes. So they get tricked into the low rates, right. but they're they're paying for it. So yeah. when you when you apply for a loan as a lender, we're required to send you what's called a loan estimate. Okay, a loan estimate consists of three pages. The first page is where everybody wants to focus you on because it has the loan amount and your rate. So they're going to say, look at that rate. Don't look at anything else. Um, or here's, here's, don't the, look at anything else. <laughs> here's, here's the key word that I always hear. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I, I always hear. Keep reading. <laughs> and you're, the only out-of-pocket expense you have oh, yeah, yeah. is a, the $500 application fee. Application fee. That's a great deal. So what would you think? If my, my first thought would be, Come on, it's free. I got five hundred bucks. That's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that's that out of pocket. So please pay attention to the out of pocket fee. So on the loan estimate, again, they're required, we're required to send it to you uh, as soon as you apply within three days. Go through it, and it's three pages. The last page you can pretty much chuck that. Page one goes through the loan amount, the term, the rate, and all this other stuff. Page two, flip it. At the top left, you're going to see origination fees. That's basically where, where I want your eyes to focus. Everything else, a lot of the title fees and everything else, those are those are mainly standard throughout uh, what state, city, and county you're in. So those are pretty much going to be the same to a point. But the top left is going to say origination. You're going to see underwriting, processing, doc prep, this, that, discount points, and all this other stuff. Don't be wowed if that number comes back in the thousands and thousands and thousands. So when we get a loan estimate, I always ask people on, the, on my channel on YouTube is to send me your loan estimate if you're in the process of refinancing or buying. Because all I want to do is I'm going to look at the rate briefly. I'm going to flip. How, how much are they charging you for this rate? And you have to focus on that. Don't be completely wowed over the rate alone. Um, so that's one of the things that I've been hearing lately is, well, you know, I asked my borrowers when they gave me that rate, what are their costs? Well, they told me there's only the out of pocket cost is 450 bucks. Mm -hmm. So, not quite. Yeah. yeah and, they, and you don't want to pay an extra couple thousand dollars to save $20 on the yeah. yeah. mortgage because yeah. it's going to take you 10 years to recoup those yeah. additional costs. And you're financing that too getting the lower for 30 rate. years. Right. So, that extra $2,000 in cost you got is actually probably going to cost you 5000 over the life of a loan. People don't realize that, though. Yeah. Yeah. Now they see his rate, and oh, it's going to cost me 1500 bucks to get a half point lower. No. <laughs> yeah. And that's the whole gist of why we're doing this. And that, that was why I created 
uh, the mortgage or the mortgage update with Dan Free on YouTube was I, I what, what started me on it was the credit repair yeah. scams. Yeah. Um, you know, people talking about you know do this and do that, and you know, and I, I saw you know hundred of them, and I'm like, you know, ninety percent of them are giving you complete BS information that's completely wrong, and they're charging you know, that collection and do totally this, and you know, go out and get more credit cards, and it's like, dude, you don't want to do any of that stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. So I created the channel, and basically, it's kind of taken off from there. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to start doing is a podcast every other week. What I'd like you guys to do is, if you would. Um, please leave some comments down below. We, we need you guys to fill in some gaps here for us and say, you know, can you guys discuss uh, investment properties, jumbo mortgages? How do I get into real estate? How do I buy my first home? How do I do get into investing and buying uh, rental properties? Um, you know, things in those areas. So if you guys would just briefly just tell them who you are, how long you've been doing this, and uh, we'll conclude there, and then give, we'll give you the information at the end of this so how you can get a hold of us. I'm Jay Nobles. I've been here in this business for, I think, eight years, something like that. Um, I've uh, been on the team, Frio, for, what's well, it been, like a year now? Mm-hmm. Years have changed. So uh, I focus on everything, purchases, refis, conventional, FHA, VA, doesn't matter. So, But I do want to touch on something that I mentioned earlier in that I wasn't trying to diminish clients that – try to figure this out on their own. Sure. What, I'm, what I'm trying to say is just call us. This is what we're here for. Call us and we'll help explain the things to you that you don't know the answer to. If I'm not a surgeon, I'm not gonna go cut my own body. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go see a surgeon. Right. I just want I want people to understand that we are professionals in this and we know what we're doing. We have seasoned, I mean, we've got 40 years of cert, of uh, 40 years of uh, experience between everybody here, I think. You're the oldest guy here. But you know what I'm saying. Call us because, I mean, this is a lot. You know what I mean? And we don't expect you to know everything. So I wanted to just kind of mention that because I sounded like I was being a jerk a little bit. Um, <laughs> clients not knowing that they shouldn't be expected to know this. So that's why we're here. Call us. Anyway. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Frank Musikis. I've been in this business for 21 years now, started in 99. I've known Dan for, what, about 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, just came on the team um, recently, so I'm glad to be here. It's probably the best place that I've been at so far, so yes. happy for that. <laughs> uh, yes. So we're, you know, between all of us, I, I think Jay underestimated we're gonna be well over 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be pretty close to, to about we're a hundred years of the yeah. experience right there. I but uh, <laughs> he makes a great point is don't be afraid to call and just get advice. Um, yeah. If it's something that makes sense, it makes sense. If it doesn't, you know, we're gonna tell you it doesn't. If it if you don't fit into that box, we'll, we'll help you get there. So, yeah, yeah. you know, everything and everybody's situation is a little bit different. Everybody's goals are a little bit different. So, yes. you know, just because your neighbor has a lower interest rate doesn't mean that's the best program for you. Okay. It may make sense to pay off some of your debt and free up as much as you can monthly. So everybody's situation is different. There's, there's no perfect loan for everybody. Um, so that's, basically what I would I would like to point out cool yeah I'm Alan Platt um, I've known Dan for I don't know 13 years but uh, lucky guy yeah <laughs> very very lucky but uh, we, I love working here and working with Dan because you know what about us well you guys, are, you guys are okay. <laughs> but uh, look getting a mortgage buying a house we, it's, it's complicated stuff yeah. and it's stressful it is very stressful and you especially don't know what you're doing I like to take the approach of, hey, let's talk through it and ask any question. No question is a dumb question. No. Um, this is confusing stuff. So I like to break it down as easy as possible, like Dan always does. I mean, let's let's try to make it as easy as possible to understand. And I think we do a good job. And we're not salespeople, so I'm not trying to sell you. I'm trying to no. advise you. Sometimes we get beat, and I have no problem saying, hey, go there. That's, that's a great offer. Don't even waste your time. But, you know. If we can advise you on making a huge decision like buying a house, please let us know. It's, it's simple. You, you hit it. Alan hit it right on the spot. Is I, I want a team around us that we aren't here to push you into something. We're here to educate you. I call us mortgage advisors um, because that's what I hope we all do. We advise you on what you can and can't do. 
we are pretty laid back. Uh, we work hard, but I don't want to push anybody into a loan. Um, I've been doing this for 32 years, and um, I, I want to educate you, and when oh, you're done, you get it. <laughs> get it. And uh, so that, that's the whole gist of the channel, that's the whole gist of the team, the whole gist of the company is we're here to help. And yeah. like Alan said, every once in a while we get, we get beat on rate or fees or whatever. God, thanks, thanks for giving us the opportunity. That's all I ask. Give us an opportunity at least to review what you have. If, if somebody beats us, God bless you, take it. We'll be the first one to say, you know what, that's a great deal. Um, go with them. You know, if something happens, please call us back. No hard feelings. But we're here to help. So um, I'm going to do this just because of Jason. <laughs> years. Eight? Eight years? Yeah. 21. So we're at 29. Uh, 14. A bit of 70. 44. Right. Wow, wow. We're, we're in eight. eight. Are we in eight? Plus 32. Oh, boy. 75, 30. six years. 76 years. So, God damn. Hopefully, hopefully we got the answer. Hopefully we got the answer. Yeah. <laughs> like I said before, my, my name is Dan Fried. I do the mortgage update every day. Um, if you're in the Chicagoland area, awesome. Check into uh, check me out on WYLL Radio weekdays from 7.30 to 8 p.m. Um, I do a YouTube channel uh, review the rate update every day to give you guys an update on what's going on with rates. Uh, we'd love to help you. So if we could be of any help, give us a call at 844 775 loan that's 844 loan you can reach us at the rate update.com um, or also give us the probably the best way to get us is just give us a call one of us will answer uh, and we'll be more than happy to help you so if you're in the process of, of getting a loan right now please send us that loan estimate we were talking about and uh, we'll go over that with you and again if somebody be beats our offers um, great we'll, we'll be the one to tell you that but at least try Probably 90% of the time, 95% of the time, we're beating people, uh, other competition in rate yeah. or fees or all. Uh, so don't, you know, don't just be happy on what the first proposal you got. At least give us a shot on that. So I, I, I appreciate you watching. Please don't forget to subscribe down below. Give us a thumbs up. Share the video. Help us get the word out to more and more people. But please leave a comment down below. I answer every comment and reply to every comment. But let us know some uh, different episodes you want us to talk about in the future to help you through this whole plan. Because uh, it is stressful. It's, it's more difficult than a lot of people think when they're getting a mortgage. But we can hopefully make it easy for you. So God bless. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.